The Power of the Pen. Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Hello and welcome to The Hopefulist. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're ready for your daily dose of inspiration and positivity. Today's quote comes from Anne Frank. I can shake off everything as I write. My sorrows disappear. My courage is reborn. Love writing. I'm a writer. I love to put pen to paper. I also love to type on the computer. You know, there are certain times when that is called for, uh, like doing your blog, maybe writing a book. And then there's other times where putting actual pen to paper is the way to go. And we're going to get into that in just a few minutes. I have so much to do around here. Have you guys also experienced this uh, lack of time issue? It's so odd for me because I usually have so much time on my hands. (laughs) And now all of a sudden I've taken on all these things, you know, with the business. And then I'm trying to kickstart this other business that I've just kind of started getting into. And with the Christmas season and the shopping and the decorating, my house is a mess. It's a mess. I'm looking around at it right now. I've got a look of disgust on my face. So first order of business today is to get this house in order. I've already written my blog. I'm doing the podcast. I sent out my newsletter today. So be on the lookout for the weekly newsletter And I actually am putting the first two gift boxes, the hopefulest gift boxes, in the mail today. So, only two gift boxes left. So, if you would like one, please let me know. Lots of treats and surprises and ways to a hopeful, happier life. That's right. We're talking about Christmas and we're talking about trees. Do you prefer a real tree or an artificial tree? Now... I would guess that most of us would prefer a real tree if it didn't come with certain annoyances like needles dropping everywhere, having to water it every day, the potential for bugs to be living inside your tree and not knowing it until it's in your house. I've heard of that happening. Friends of mine have had their house infested with bugs after bringing them in on their tree, but the smell, oh, the smell. Now, my main issue with a real tree is I like to keep my tree up way longer than a live tree would ever make it. (laughs) I want my tree up early. I keep it up late. We all knew this, so I always go with the artificial tree. Every year I'm like, maybe this is the year I get the real tree. And then two weeks before Thanksgiving, I'm putting up the artificial tree. Now, Marcy says, I love a real tree and given the choice would always choose one, but I got tired of paying $50 a year for a real tree. So I invested in a well-made artificial one, which we are using for the first time this year. Very low maintenance they are. That's, That's the great thing about an artificial tree. Lori says, well, artificial because Megan is allergic to a real tree. Oh, no. Michelle says artificial. Mary Ellen says real. And uh, Deb says artificial as well. So there you go. Seems to be a mix of the both with, I again, I think most people would prefer a real tree. I'm just guessing. But there's just a lot of maintenance and a lot of a little annoyances. I have my real wreath on the door. And even that, just, you know, the needles just falling a lot. Especially when I walk into the door, which I tend to do from time to time. And then, that was the, the noise that the 
rustling of the door causes the needles to fall. You want me to do that again? It's, yeah, they're all on the floor now. You know, and they're not, they don't even get watered, these wreaths. So <laughs> we'll see if it lasts until Christmas. On to the blog post for the day, the Mighty Pen. When it comes to journaling, I urge you to write things out rather than use your computer or device. There is something about putting pen to paper that is empowering. If you remember back to your school days and your study habits, if you're like me, you wrote out the important lessons to solidify them into your brain. Typing things out just does not have the same power. When you take the time to write things out, it becomes embedded in your brain. It's a signal to your brain to remember. Why? Because it takes longer. Yes, that is also the annoying part of it. But anything worth doing is doing right. Am I right? You wouldn't do a half workout. Well, maybe you would, but you shouldn't. You wouldn't clean half the kitchen. You wouldn't only do part of the laundry. You wouldn't decorate half your Christmas tree. So if you're going to do something, do it right. And then I wrote it like right out instead of right. You get what I did there? <laughs> I just crack myself up. <sighs> Not only do I think writing things out is the absolute best way to go about it, but it's fun too. This is where the super cute notebook and fabulous pen comes in. I have to say I'm getting rave reviews for my hopefulest pen. People love them. Get you one of those in the hopefulest gift box or find a pen that you absolutely love. It will make you want to write even more. My hope is that you write things that you want to read. Part of my daily gratitude practice is reading a version, a vision of what I want my life to look like in the future. I made it so enticing that I can't wait to read it every day. I'll give you a little hint. Part of it is waking up in Hawaii in the cold months. That's right. I can't wait for it to come true. And reading it every day will manifest it the fastest. It helps me envision the life I want and speeds up the process of making it happen by putting it out into the universe every day. Not only that, but envisioning that life will spur you to come up with ideas on how to get there. It seems passive, but it's really not. Once the ideas start to flow, you must take action. With all this said, if the only way you will keep a journal is to type it out, then by all means, do it that way. It's better to do it half-ass than not at all. But I want more for you. And I think you should expect the best for yourself. This all does take a little bit of time, but if you are doing it right, <laughs> I did it again. I spelled it the right with the right. and <laughs> It should be an enjoyable experience. If you think of it as a chore, it will be one. If you think of it as a time just for you to dream, then you will look forward to it. Oh my, it is Tuesday already. Get on out there and make today fabulous. And be badass, of course. I'm here cheering you on. Thank you for listening to The Hopeless, hosted by Wendy McClure. For more inspiration, please visit hopefulist.com. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow on The Hopefulist. Do it right. <laughs>